Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Gemology for Schmucks. My name is Peter Nelson, and I'm here to guide you in everything you need to know about gemstones. A super common email that I get almost every week is, Peter, I love gemstones, I love hearing what you're saying, and I got a small budget, so what do you recommend I buy? Well, today what I'm going to do is recommend a banger on a buck, which is to say a fantastic gemstone for a cheap price. Now let's talk about the word cheap real quick, because cheap means different things for different people. For some people, cheap means low quality, and other people believe that cheap just means a low price. So it's important to understand what we're talking about here. And what I'm saying is that some gemstones can be a low price while also being excellent quality. Good value, but not necessarily high value. So the stone that we're going to be talking about today is this neon blue colored stone, blue green, otherwise known as Apatite. And while it sounds a lot like, you know, that feeling you get when you're hungry, it's not spelled the same, A-P-A-T-I-T-E. An Apatite can come in a variety of different colors, but one of the interesting things about Apatite is that it comes in a neon blue or blue-green color some of the time. And this can overlap a lot with a very popular, very expensive stone known as Paraíba Tourmaline, named after Paraíba State in Brazil. But Apatite and Paraíba, while they overlap in color, Apatite is much more plentiful in the earth, which is what makes it so much more affordable, aka cheap. So let's avoid using the word cheap because I don't think it's very productive. So it's a very affordable stone with a huge visual impact, which is why I'm recommending it to you today. Even if you say, Peter, no, I love Paraíba, I gotta have it, I'll say, okay, how much are you prepared to spend? Because we very quickly march into the tens of thousands of dollars for a decent stone. There are still expensive stones that are lousy, just like many of the other already famous stones. So when we talk about gemstones and getting best value, in my opinion, what you need to do is buck the trend. If everybody's saying this is a fantastic stone, you just got to have it, you're going to be competing on price with everybody else. That's okay, I'll sell it to you, but you have to be able to accept the budget. Otherwise, if you want best value, Trust your eyes. If something is beautiful, but still hasn't become popular yet, that's where you stand to get the best value or bang for your buck. So Appetite is one of my favorites and I believe that everybody needs to get to know Appetite very well because it is such an excellent simulant for some other very high priced stones. Even if you like those stones, you should be very comfortable at identifying Appetite. In the other video that I made on the spectroscope, Appetite, albeit it's a smaller piece than this one, is included in that set because it has a very distinctive absorption spectrum that you can see with the handheld spectroscope. Once you are competent with the spectroscope, within seconds, you will be able to distinguish appetite from its other look-like gemstones. Remember Paraíba Tourmaline, Cobalt Spinel? These are both stones that even in small sizes can be thousands of dollars. And as they get to larger sizes, quickly climb into tens of thousands of dollars. Whereas with Appetite, you're talking about a few hundred bucks for a larger stone. And they can look pretty much exactly the same. The refractive index can overlap for some of those stones, particularly Paraíba. Other collector stones like Afghanite, which are incredibly rare, can have the exact same color overlap with Appetite in certain varieties. So how nice is it to be able to pull out your spectroscope quickly identify it and know, yeah, this is not Afghanite. I'm not paying that price. This is Appetite. I'll buy it, but for this price. Skills worth having. What I love about Appetite is not only is it important to get to know, but visually I would say that it is one of the very few stones that you can find in the earth that naturally has a neon color while still being plentifully available. And that availability is part of what keeps the price in that affordable, reachable range for most people. So whether it's neon blue or neon green blue, for this price range, the only other thing I can think of would be fluorite, and that is much, much softer gemstone. It doesn't even take as nice of a polish as Appetite. So a couple of facts about Appetite. Yes, it has a diagnostic spectrum that we can identify with the handheld spectroscope. Number two, hardness. It is the defining mineral on the Mohs scale for number five. If we remember our lessons on Mohs hardness, seven is quartz, and quartz being one of the most plentiful minerals in the world, it accumulates everywhere. It's in the dust. So anything that is a seven or below, that's to include seven, nah, will gradually get scratched over time. Very small scratches, which dulls the luster. Over time, regardless of how you maintain the stone, you are likely to need to repolish it in the future. And that's to include your quartz. 
But fortunately, hobbyist lapidaries are becoming more and more popular, so repolishing a gemstone is not necessarily a big deal. And besides, for the price, forget about it. And as well, with things that are soft and very popular, like pearls, for example, we still use those in jewelry, but we don't talk about hardness being a problem in pearls. We just choose to put it in a different place on the body. Pearl rings are a lot less common. Instead, you find them on pendants or on earrings or strings of them around your neck because you're not likely to go around bashing things with your neck now, are you? Unless you're really into the metal scene. But I digress. Everything has its time and place, and we just need to understand that when we go about designing jewelry. I've even got clients that didn't want to design jewelry. They just like to collect loose gemstones. So this is a perfect fit for somebody who wants a huge visual impact while still maintaining their budget. So if you have any questions or if you'd like to get a hold of me directly, head over to gemshepherd.com. Otherwise, leave me a comment down below. Hit like, hit subscribe if you haven't already. Tell all of your friends about me. And until next time, bye-bye.